So you've been, you were interested <laughs> in theoretical physics oh, yeah. back in the day, yeah. went to study that at the University of Cambridge. Yeah. What inspired that search in physics? That search, it was just because yeah. you were fascinated, you know, with the meaning of life. And at that time, I only thought life was the physical world, just bodies, just planets, just stuff. And so you wanted to try and find some meaning and some truth, you know, through the study of stuff. Mm. But then you found as many other people were also uh, studying stuff, and they found that there was spaces and gaps in stuff. Well, they used to say the, the, the ghost in the machine, that there was a mind there, there was a consciousness, there was something happening without which you know, the universe would not exist. And that was a fascinating thing to actually to try and investigate. So I was just mentioning that first Buddhist who I ever met uh, was uh, Professor Bernard Carr, but he was just a student like me. And we both were uh, into theoretical physics, and we were both Buddhists, and we both joined the Psychic Research Society, where we went to hunt ghosts and also do some very interesting experiments just on perception. And one of the, uh, one of the experiments he told me about uh, a couple of years ago was what he called a flower pot experiment. This was uh, performed in Imperial College in London, which was part of London University and was, had a lot of, a lot of great uh, scientists would study there and produce papers there. And one of his friends uh, claimed that he could demonstrate in the laboratory levitation. <laughs> so he managed to get a lot of professors and scientists, trained observers, to come into one of the lecture theatres in Imperial College in London to see levitation in action. <laughs> And so he came in with this flower pot and he placed it on the table and every all the uh, physicists and scientists could witness this. They had cameras rolling, uh, infrared cameras, UV cameras, just to make sure that everybody could see what would happen if he could levitate this flower pot. And he asked his audience of old professors and very well published scientists to help out creating the right atmosphere by all chanting OM together. And I say that his great achievement was to actually to convince all these old professors <laughs> to go chanting OM. And as good. they were chanting OM, the flower pot rose into the air. Mm -hmm. It worked. They filmed it, they photographed it, and afterwards they asked many of the professors and the scientists who were supposed to be uh, trained uh, observers what they saw. And a couple of those observers were supposed to be objective observers said the flower pot stayed on the table throughout, it never moved. Yeah. And they said, well, here's the photograph, here's the video. They said, no, that was fake. It stayed on the table all the time. And that was the whole purpose of the experiment, to actually to show that if it's something we think is impossible, it cannot happen. Even if it does, mm. we block it from our perception. perception. We're not even conscious of actually seeing it. Mm. Because the truth of the matter was that underneath that bench there was a huge electromagnet. Yeah. And that. they, yes, that's why it levitated. But they needed to get all the professors to chant OM. Mm. Because whenever you turn on such a, a very um, big current, you can always hear the hum of the current. <laughs> so chanting OM served <laughs> the purpose of disguising what was really going on masking the, the, the sound of the very heavy current. But the purpose was, mm. even though it did levitate, yeah. people would not see it. 
the limits of our imagination can um, limit our perception. Yes, indeed. It's our views. Mm. And if it's something that's too impossible to see, mm. we won't even be conscious that we're blocking it from our perception. Mm. It's not as if we observe and yeah. say it must be wrong. We don't even observe it. No. We that's just don't see it. Mm. So there's no such thing as bare awareness. By the time we're aware or mindful of anything, it's already been filtered and sometimes exaggerated to fit what we want to see.